Okay, so thanks you all for coming today, and thanks to those of you on, uh, watching on the webcast. My name is Dave Hart. I am the User Services Manager at Sizzle, and I'm here today to talk about the uh, Cheyenne system uh, being deployed up in, at NWSC. The, it re occurred to me about a couple weeks ago when during the site visits that because of the site visits for, from NSF that I hadn't had a chance to go around and tell people about this great announcement we made back in January uh, and suddenly it was June, uh, things were happening and I hadn't had a chance to tell people about this. So uh, I'm making a few rounds doing these presentations. Hopefully uh, you find this information uh, of use. I got this slide uh, recently so I decided to work it into the presentation somehow but this is the history of supercomputing at NCAR way back to the CDC 3600 in the 1960s up to Cheyenne today, the uh, system up at NWSC. And the picture I'm showing of Cheyenne is an artist rendering of what it will look like. Those are the actual artistic panels that will be on the system. So if you go up there, that should be pretty close to what it looks like. But without further ado, I'll jump to the main stuff you're here to hear about. What is Cheyenne? <coughs> so planned production period will be January 2017. Uh, through 2021, and as I keep pointing out, that's a real year. It just seems like a strange thing when you hit the 2020s. It suddenly it sounds uh, somewhat artificial. Uh, but it's a real year, five years out uh, for the Cheyenne system. It is an SGI, ICE XA cluster, with 4,032 dual socket nodes. Um, not much, a little smaller in terms of nodes than our Yellowstone system, but each node has two 18-core uh, Intel Xeon Broadwell generation processors. Uh, that makes 145,152 Broadwell cores on the system total. Altogether, 5.34 petaflops peak performance. If you do the math, that's 1.3 teraflops per <coughs> node. These numbers are getting numbers are getting crazy. Uh, and a total of 313 terabytes of memory on the system. So uh, most of the nodes will have 64 gigabytes, and a few, 864 of them, will have 128 gigabytes of memory. We expect, based on our benchmarking, that it'll perform on real applications about a, worth a two and a half times Yellowstone's compute capacity. So the 5.34 petaflops, you might do the math, is about 3x or a little more than three times Yellowstone's peak. But uh, on real applications, we expect at about two and a half times of what Yellowstone delivers. The interconnect is a Mellanox EDR InfiniBand. And a big change for us is the topology, a nine-dimensional enhanced hypercube. Uh, for those of you mathematically inclined to go figure out what that is looking like. Um, it's different than the fat tree on Yellowstone, but it does mean it is much uh, simpler as an interconnect. If you look at the bottom, there are 224 36 port switches and none of the big ORCA director switches that we have on Yellowstone. So there's nine big racks up for Yellowstone that are not, don't exist with uh, Cheyenne because the topology is a little thinner. It also means fewer moving parts to, to, to fail. And it is the most recent generation of InfiniBand, but it's been available on the market for uh, some time now but 100 gigabits per second link bandwidth is what we expect to, to see. Uh, login nodes, six login nodes as we have on, Cheyenne, uh, on Yellowstone, 36 cores, so they're, they're identical to the uh, compute nodes, but they have double the maximum memory, so 256 gigabytes. So that's very comparable to what we have on Yellowstone for the login nodes. And some service nodes, oh, I forgot to change this, uh, for uh, the scheduler and other components. But Put this all together, Cheyenne represents 1.2 billion core hours per year. I have to talk about billions of core hours now. That's, uh, the system just is getting, are getting huge. So for those who want the technical specs, 2.3 gigahertz Intel E5 2697 version 4 processors. Um, the, for me, uh, this DDR2400 memory, so it's the fastest memory available as well. Uh, the most interesting thing for me on this is the, how you get from one socket with 18 cores up to uh, the 145,000 plus cores. So 18 cores on one socket, two sockets in one compute node, four compute nodes in a blade, nine blades in a blade enclosure, one E-rack has four enclosures, and you can see in the picture there's the four, you can see the four enclosures uh, in a rack. One E-cell has two of those E-racks, uh, along with a cooling unit. So the E-cell is the 
major building block of, of, yellow, of Cheyenne, sorry, and Cheyenne has 14 of those E cells. And if you do the math, you'll go from 18 cores to 145,152 cores on the system. This shows how the system's peak performance has been growing over time since we've, uh, since at least I've been around them and several years before. You can see the Blue Fire system. Many of you probably remember that. It was decommissioned in 2013. Uh, you can see it's barely right, rates on the scale at this point. It was about 77 teraflops. Yellowstone was considerably larger, and Cheyenne is much larger still. A big challenge that we'll talk about toward the end is that temporary peak of a large amount of compute capacity in 2017 while Yellowstone and Cheyenne are both running that drops considerably when we take Yellowstone out of production. We'll come back to that. But quickly, the software on Cheyenne will not be terribly different from what's on Yellowstone with one exception, and it's highlighted here in red. We'll be switching from the LSF platform LSF scheduler to Altair's PBS Pro batch subsystem. So for users, that's the most visible change that you will see. Uh, we will be providing some training, obviously, and documentation about the need, what you need to do to convert. But at a very high level, unless you're writing very advanced scripts, it's not going to be a terribly difficult change. Uh, a major change in your scripts will be instead of using the letter B in the uh, batch scheduler commands, B sub, or uh, things like that, it switches to Q sub. And that's uh, one of the major changes in the in the platform schedule or from platform to Altair. Otherwise, we'll provide the documentation and it'll it, it shouldn't be a major impact, but we will work with you on those. Otherwise, we'll continue running uh, GPFS for the file system. Uh, another piece of a, a software that's uh, added here is SGI's message pass, passing toolkit. That is their optimized version of MPI and it's supposed to be uh, add value and performance to the system as well. So we'll see it's, it's topology aware, so it can use the nine-dimensional hypercubes, as, as does PBS Pro, uh, which is what, why it's added to the system, is it is also aware of the 9D enhanced hypercube topology, so it can take advantage of that and put your jobs on nodes that are closer in the uh, hypercube. <clears throat> A quick word on the test systems. Laramie is the test system for Cheyenne. It's the... Uh, it's much smaller. It is an ice XA. It is air cooled, unlike Cheyenne, which does have the cooling racks. Uh, Laramie is air cooled. Has 72 dual socket nodes. It has 18 core uh, so uh, chips. They are slightly slower. The 2.1 gigahertz is correct. It is a slightly slower chip. Um, that brings it though to a total of 2,592 cores on the system. Pretty sizable for a test system. And in fact. Um, 87 teraflops peak for Laramie is 15 teraflops greater than the peak for Blue Fire. So the test system is now larger than our uh, two, year, two, two generations old production HPC resource. Similarly, the Picnic uh, file system, I haven't talked about Glade yet, but Picnic is the file system, 250 terabytes usable capacity, which is actually 100 terabytes more than we were able to procure with Blue Fire back in the day. So the test systems are fairly substantial in their own right, um, but primarily they'll be used for testing. And uh, a few early access users will have act, uh, will be able to use them to get ready for Cheyenne. As far as a timeline, the facility and networking infrastructure upgrades at NWSC are already underway. They started much earlier this this year. Um, it will include a 100 gigabit Ethernet link to the outside world. I was corrected at the last talk. It is a hundred a single 100 gigabit Ethernet link to start with, but we will have 100 gigabits out of NWSC. The Laramie system arrives, should be arriving next week in July. Uh, it's on schedule to arrive next week. We've had early access to the, uh, test the system at the factory. The Cheyenne hardware is already being assembled in part, uh, one e-cell at a time. It's in Chippewa Falls, where SGI's factory is, and it'll be undergoing a factory test there for, of the full system in August. That's where we'll do the high performance Linpack run for the top 500 list. Due to the timing of when they need that number, they'll run it in, Sh in Chippewa Falls before they ship the system to us in uh, September. Uh, then from September through December, the system will be going through installation, integration with the Glade file system, and acceptance testing, which includes a 30-day availability testing to make sure it will uh, run reliably. 
So we're targeting NCAR acceptance by mid-December and the start of full production by January of 2017. As I no wanted to note, Yellowstone does continue in production for a full year through all of 2017. And a quick note on why it's named Cheyenne. The city of Cheyenne also celebrates its 150th anniversary next year in 2017, so the new system will also be part of that city's uh, celebration in, uh, of its uh, birthday. On to the file system, NWSC2 file system resource. It'll be a, we'll be adding a 21 petabyte DDN storage system to with Cheyenne. Uh, if you're into the technical details, I can let you read those. Uh, but the upshot 21 petabytes of usable capacity out of the 27 petabytes raw capacity. 200 gigabyte ag aggregate IO bandwidth from Cheyenne to the new disk. And this disk will be integrated with the current Glade, so the file, total file system will be 37 petabytes of disk. The, old, the older Glade will be around. And that new hardware is expandable by another 21 petabytes in the existing infrastructure by inserting drives into empty slots. So there's a potential for a 58 petabyte total file system here. <laughs> And as I mentioned, we'll continue using GPFS, which IBM is now calling Spectrum Scale uh, for its soft, uh, file system software. Quick note on the Glade HPC integration. So most importantly for me, it, there's a lot of technical details for folks who are interested. Uh, the RDA, ESG, and, and non-Cheyenne and Yellowstone uh, servers will have access to Glade over 40 gigabit ethernet. Cheyenne, though, will have access through the EDR InfiniBand with 24 new NSD servers. Uh, the rest of this is some technical details for those who care about how we're making this all happen. Uh, for me, this is a more interesting and easier to explain picture. Um, the Glade cluster will have Scratch, Project, and a Home and Apps file system like we do today. The Scratch, though, will be larger. We intend to put 15 petabytes of the new disk as Scratch. Uh, that's a bit different than what we did with the current uh, file system. It's smaller, scratch, larger project space. We'll only put five petabytes of the new stuff in project space. The older current Glade stuff will be part of project space, and at some point we may decide to move the newer file system, newer disk back into scratch as well, so we'll continue to have a lot of scratch space, more modest amount of project space relative to that. And the outage that we had earlier this week was to add the, a new 100 terabyte appliance for the home file systems. That's what, that, what was the uh, main reason for the outage. That'll help take some of the file activity from the home directories out of the big uh, Glade uh, GPFS cluster, which should reduce uh, some of the slowness that we sometimes experience or contribute to help minimize that. It'll also allow us to offer larger home directories to all the users, so we uh, expect to have that. That should be available by the end of July. Now here's the comparable uh, picture to what I showed with the, the HPC. Here's the disk growth. You can see we started with about a petabyte and a half in the Mesa lab uh, several years ago. Uh, grew Glade with, with Yellowstone up to 16.4 petabytes and adding 21 petabytes in with Cheyenne. And we are planning to expand that system by another 21 petabytes. So we hope by the, uh, within a year of deploying Cheyenne, we should have another 21 petabytes of disk being able to integra be integrated into the system, 58 petabytes of disk. Now, the Cheyenne procurement did not include new data analysis and visualization resources. So we continue to have the Geyser and Caldera clusters with the same uh, basic hardware in, uh, for those systems. They're on FDR InfiniBand. Um, terabyte nodes on Geyser, of course, the Cheyenne or Caldera system, some with uh, the GPUs. I'll talk later, though. There are plans to eventually upgrade this. They won't be there for uh, probably till the closer to the end of 2017 when we'll see new hardware for data analysis and visualization. But users will be able to access these systems from the Cheyenne login nodes. Uh, you won't have to go over and log into Yellowstone to, to use them. So we'll make it, uh, making that work out for you as well. A quick note on the HPSS archive. It hasn't changed much. We'll talk a little bit about what's in store for that later. But I just wanted to highlight that we now have 60 petabytes 
stored in HPSS. That's the actual holdings, not the capacity, which is uh, still 160 petabytes. 60 petabytes of actual data on tape. With Yellowstone, we're growing at about 12 petabytes a year, or a petabyte a month into HPSS. That'll obviously grow with Cheyenne. That's beginning to concern me. It's an issue. It's uh, not that the system can't handle it, but there's other things in the environment or the greater policy world, such as the federal data access mandate, that makes that uh, an interesting number to consider and what that means. Uh, and we continue to operate some libraries for HPSS at the Mesa Lab for geographic uh, disaster recovery. But there is an upgrade planned for this in late 2017. So just to highlight here, 40 petabytes of, of that 60 was added since Yellowstone started, just to give you an idea of how fast things are going. 20 petabytes was everything up until Yellowstone, 40 petabytes since Yellowstone was deployed. So you can do some math and sort of project, but Ye Cheyenne should, could conceivably produce two times that per month. So 24 petabytes a month coming off of Cheyenne potentially. Now, I don't have to manage that data. That's on the users, but that's uh, it, it's not a, not becoming a non-trivial problem for you. And uh, I just had, this is the obligatory slide block diagram, almost uh, literally, of the systems, Glade, Yellowstone, Cheyenne, the uh, Caldera and Geyser clusters, and the networking, um, putting all the pieces together and how they're all going to talk to one another. Um, I kept this slide for in case a question comes up. It did come up at one of these talks. So uh, we still expect, through the contract with SGI, to have the HPC hardware exceed 98% availability. And um, the Glade hardware should exceed 99% availability. We expect this to be reliable. That's what the, we've promised with the vendor, or the vendor has promised us. So a quick note, Cheyenne, uh, on what it looks like when you'll go up there to see it. 14 of those E-cells that I mentioned earlier, each containing those two racks and a heat exchanger and 16 36-port InfiniBand switches. And uh, there's two other air-cooled storage and service racks where the login nodes are stored. Uh, Glade will expand by eight racks, adding to the 19 that currently exist, along with the DAV, uh, data analysis and visualization uh, racks. Total power, about two megawatts. So HPC will uh, consume about 1.75 megawatts and the other components adding to it, but about two megawatts when all is said and done. By comparison, here's the Cheyenne, Yellowstone, and Blue Fire uh, power efficiency numbers and some other numbers as well. But you'll see that from Yellowstone to Cheyenne, it was a very modest increase in the uh, HPC power consumption. Upshot of all this being that for about three times the power of Blue Fire, Cheyenne will deliver 71 times the computational capacity. That's just a, a number to highlight about why we do these upgrades. Uh, the cost of running them is quite substantial, and uh, it does make sense at, when your utility bill is uh, seven digits long to consider efficiency as a major reason to upgrade. This just again shows uh, another chart showing these growth of the power efficiency. Cheyenne is up at 34 megaflops, sustained megaflops per watt, uh, well, almost twice what Yellowstone was delivering. Uh, some highlights in the deep history, the frost system that we ran for a while, a blue Jean system from IBM, blue Jean L system was actually quite power efficient relative to the other systems at the time. And Lynx, a very a rather small Cray system was also power efficient, but uh, our production systems are now uh, far exceeding those. So if you go up to visit NWSC, you'll be in the viewing area, uh, highlighted at the top of the slide there, and looking in at Yellowstone, standing next to a much smaller Cheyenne system. Um, initially, our plans called for finishing out Module A, which is the room behind this room. When you're standing in the viewing area, you, it would be behind another wall. We were going to finish that module, deploy Cheyenne in that. Turns out Cheyenne, after uh, the uh, procurement process, would slide nicely right next to Yellowstone without having to uh, move Yellowstone or uh, finish out the other room. So, and it'll still be viewable from that viewing area. Uh, it's considerably smaller footprint. And also highlighted here are where the Laramie test systems 
Laramie and the other test systems will be uh, attached to where Geyser and uh, the, the uh, other s management nodes are, and they're in fewer racks as well. And the new Glade storage is in about half as many racks as the old Glade storage. So uh, the incredible shrinking HPC system here. Um, but it does, uh, does save us the power. It does make it less uh, power hungry, and it'll uh, save us some space. So now I'm going to turn to using the system. What I'm probably you're here uh, as much to hear about as much as anything. Just a reminder. So we do have four different user communities of Cheyenne: the university researchers, uh, a climate simulation laboratory that supports uh, the CESM community allocation and some other large-scale uh, climate work from universities, NCAR lab and uh, strategic capability projects, and as, as well as the Wyoming NCAR Alliance. So all these po have policies that have been established. And basically, the upshot is I have to make this pie chart work out for making sure all those communities get what they've been promised of the system. And these show you the 1.2 billion core hours from Cheyenne basically will work out to this many core hours for each of the communities. Um, so the NCAR staff and lab and NSC projects will have about 350 million core hours per year with an equal amount going to the university. CSL has another 330 million, and Wyoming is about 160 million. Uh, a, a side note, you'll see the AMPS slice up there, about 1%. They currently, that's the Antarctic Mesoscale Prediction System. They predict the weather for Antarctica. It is currently running on an air, a separate cluster from Yellowstone called Erebus. With the Cheyenne procurement, they'll actually be just using the Cheyenne cluster itself. They won't have a separate cluster, so they get a slice up there to continue forecasting the weather for Antarctica. So I mentioned this problem I'm facing uh, in 2017. So we'll have both Yellowstone and Cheyenne in production for a year. And the 2018 decommissioning of Yellowstone is about a 30% drop in the compute capacity available to the user community here. So my job and my fun challenge will be to manage the allocations and access to the systems in that overlap year to not let you feel that drop. So the idea being target that overlap year, and that's not, it's a 600 million core hour overlap, right? 600 million core hours of Yellowstone uh, or a comparable amount of Cheyenne that you don't want to feel go away in 2018. So. That's what we'll be f focusing on and trying to target that much of the system toward fixed timeline projects. Uh, for example, CMIP-6, uh, the coupled model intercomparison project, phase six, will use some of that overlap time for a year. And that's the kind of, kind of project we'll be looking for to say, you have a year, you have to be done, we can't continue it. But with them taking some of those cycles, you shouldn't feel them disappearing in the, in the following year. But uh, further complicated, that pie chart still has to be honored for both Yellowstone and Cheyenne. I can't unilaterally remove you know, the Wyoming or the CSL from either system uh, without them allowing them a chance to have their share of each of those. So we'll be managing that as well. Uh, but that's going to be what we'll be working in the, in the overlap year. But coming back toward the present a bit, Everyone has allocation opportunities in the fall, right? We have a spring, basically a spring and fall cycle for everybody. Most of the fall allocations this year will be targeting Cheyenne or should be thinking Cheyenne. Many current or active Yellowstone projects will be given the time to complete and it, you'll have an opportunity if needed to say, I need to finish on Yellowstone what I've already started, so I need a little more time, but we'll be managing the, the allocations to make sure people who currently have allocations can finish them on Yellowstone, uh, and new projects will be targeting Cheyenne. So keep that in mind as you, we're moving toward the fall. So try not to do a lot of new starts on Yellowstone. It's not the time to do so. The final approach for how we manage this may vary on various things, um, unspent allocations, whether groups want to get off of Yellowstone and transfer allocations from Yellowstone to Cheyenne will affect how much we can allocate back to Cheyenne, users who want to use Yellowstone, and so on. So keep that in mind as you're working toward the fall use of the system. Think about wrapping up on Yellowstone and starting up on Cheyenne in 2017. Um, 
don't plan to finish up on Yellowstone all of your work of a very large project in December. Not a good plan. Um, there's no telling what may happen at the end. It usually fills up with people trying to finish everything. So plan your year for 2017 carefully. Uh, try to finish that up, finish it up earlier, and don't uh, count on the system uh, having lots of spare cycles toward the end. That being said, the first opportunity on Cheyenne is the Accelerated Scientific Discovery Program. This ASD initiative provides a small number of quote-unquote shovel-ready projects the opportunity to consume a lot of Cheyenne time in a very short period. So tentatively, think about 10 or 12 projects with almost dedicated access to Cheyenne for two to three months, roughly 250 million core hours. Half of those are university-led, and half will be NCAR-led. So just on an average, that's 20 million core hours per project. We will have uh, the bar for the smaller size will be around 10 million core hours. So you can imagine some can, you can have a project that thinks much larger than 20 million as well. Um, keep that in mind. So we want people who can start on or before January 1st with a very large project and have the re staff resources to Run the, run the jobs necessary. Those projects will be reviewed. They're not just um, by me. The university projects will be reviewed by the CHAP, which is the CISL HPC allocations panel, and the NCAR projects will be reviewed by the same panel that reviews the NCAR strategic capability requests. So the schedule. Um, this is, uh, date was announced the last time I gave this, but August 29th, is the deadline for ASD submissions, both university and NCAR, so we can get them reviewed and have those projects ready to go at the outset of Cheyenne. So uh, the chat for regular chat projects will be slightly later, and then we'll have the recommendations for ASD projects by early October with the plan to have them able to start on the Laramie system by the beginning of November. So sometime in November, be able to access Laramie, get codes ported, do some initial benchmarking runs and so forth, and have them ready to go on December 1st in case the system's early by uh, some chance, but no later than December 18th, which is the scheduled end of acceptance. So if the system passes acceptance sooner, we'll get these groups on the system. So I have to have them ready to go uh, by, the, I want them ready by the beginning of December. And then on January 1st, uh, Cheyenne enters production, and officially that's when the ASD projects will start. But if it's ready before Christmas, we'll have them on before Christmas. Cheyenne versus Yellowstone. So there's some numbers here. A lot of these I've already talked about. Twice the compute nodes or compute cores on Cheyenne versus Yellowstone, which makes a lot of my calculations nice. Double what you have on uh, Yellowstone to estimate the core hour count on uh, Cheyenne, but in the red box is the major number here. Uh, Cheyenne cores are slightly more powerful. So to estimate the number of core hours you need on Cheyenne, take your Yellowstone estimate and multiply it by 0.82. So 20 million core hours on Yellowstone, for example, is 16.4 million core hours on Cheyenne. It's, they're slightly more powerful cores, we estimate. So that's based on our benchmarks, not on the pure performance of the system. All right, we're getting toward the end here. The sizzle HPC and storage roadmap. This is where we're going beyond Cheyenne and wanted to talk a bit about this. I mentioned earlier the um, geyser and caldera clusters are sticking around for a while as the primary analysis and viz clusters. But we will have a procurement in 2017 to deploy or to select a new uh, set of uh, data analysis systems for NWSC2. Likely they'll have non-volatile memory or SSDs in, on the nodes so we can have even larger memory close to the, the compute. That'll be happening in 2017 with an early 2018 deployment for those. And then also be looking at a, a many core system for, uh, to augment Cheyenne. This will be in preparation, not so much for Cheyenne, but for NWSC3, which you see out there in the 2021 timeline. Uh, we anticipate that looking at what's out there in the technology space, uh, there's a good chance that NWSC3 may have uh, a lot in common with a many-core system. So we intend 
to procure a system large enough to be interesting and to de uh, develop and port codes to a uh, many core system in the interim period while Cheyenne is uh, doing the production work. HPSS, you see a procurement for a tape archive is planned for uh, mid 2017 and 2018. That means, however, the current HPSS has to carry on through the first year or so of Cheyenne, which is the reason we intend in uh, after the first year to, or in the first year of Cheyenne to, to add the extra 21 petabytes. It may be that we have to use more disk in the short term to wait for the right technology time frame for HPSS to be upgraded. So they're uh, taking advantage of the, the costs here to augment the Glade system with the additional 21 petabytes. And then you'll see my favorite period is from January of 2018 through June of 2018 where we're not running two systems and we're not yet starting the next procurement. So we have six months where they give us a little break. But then we start up again with the procurement process for NWSC3, which is a multi-year process to get ready for that. And you'll see that uh, ready on the horizon in 2021. Uh, some notes about Glade. You see the Glade 2C, which I don't have much information about, other than we know that Glade 1, the current 16 petabytes, will last another couple of years, but it will not last indefinitely. It'll be running past the end of Yellowstone, but at some point we will have to replace it with Glade 2C in order to not have a reduced <coughs> capacity available on disk. <coughs> with that, the end of my formal presentation, so I'll thank you for listening and I'm able to take some questions. <laughs>